In this video, we're going to take a look at chemical calculations, how to get mole ratios from balanced chemical equations, and the stoichiometric process that we use for these calculations. So in order to do calculations that involve two different substances and how they relate to each other, we need a balanced chemical equation. It's essential to be able to relate one substance to another substance, whether it's a reactant or a product to each other. And that relationship is, again, that mole ratio as we just discussed. It's a conversion factor between the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation of those reactants and products. You can relate any reactant to another reactant or a reactant to a product or a product to another reactant or a product to another product. Using those coefficients, we can look at them on the macroscopic scale and get a mole ratio of those two substances. So let's take a look at how we would apply those mole ratios to each other in a mole to mole calculation. So here we have nitrogen combining with hydrogen to make ammonia. And if, in this case, I have 0.75 moles of hydrogen that are going to react with hydrogen to make ammonia. In our balanced chemical equation, we have one mole of nitrogen combines with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. So we'll start with our known and our unknown. So the problem, how many moles of ammonia, there's our unknown, are produced when 0.75 moles of hydrogen react. So that's how much we have, how much we're going to start with. Now you relate my known to my unknown. And the only way I can relate hydrogen to ammonia, again, is with that balanced chemical equation. That three moles of hydrogen gas is going to react, and two moles of ammonia gas is going to be produced. Now I can take my given, put it over one, and now use that conversion factor, those two equivalent measurements of, to each other, in a way to reduce out moles of hydrogen to get to moles of ammonia. So I need moles of hydrogen on the denominator and moles of ammonia in the numerator. Now moles divided by moles reduces out, and I'm left with half a mole of ammonia being produced. That's all well and good. That shows us how we can relate those two different substances to each other, but very rarely do scientists talk in terms of moles. Even the geekiest of geek scientists don't talk about moles when they're with their friends. Usually we look at things in terms of mass, because that's the most common way in which measurements are taken in the lab. We also can look at liters. We're not going to really look at particles too, too much, because again, you can't really measure the number of particles within the laboratory. But we can get liters and grams very often, so we're going to use that rather than just that one-step mole conversion. So in order to do that, we're going to take the mass that we would measure, change that into moles, convert those into moles with the molar mass, then use the mole ratio to then get to the different substance which we're looking at, and then take those moles and change them into grams for that substance again that we're trying to determine. Because it's not really good to compare masses of one substance to another because there isn't really a good comparison since they have different molar masses, and it would be really tricky to try and put all that together. So keeping it in three different smaller steps makes it a lot more simpler to look at. So let's take a look at that process, how it's going to work out. Let's take it really kind of slow and break it up into a bunch of little pieces. So we're going to take that same reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen combining to make ammonia. But in this case now, we have 5.6 grams of nitrogen, which are going to react with excess hydrogen. That just means that there's plenty enough of it. It's not going to run out. It's going to be that nitrogen, which we're going to start with, that will run out. And how many grams of ammonia can we then make this time with that 5.6 grams of nitrogen? So what do we know? What do we not know? Again, we're trying to calculate the number of moles, grams of ammonia, and we know that we have 5.6 grams of nitrogen in this case. So how can I relate nitrogen to ammonia? Again, the only way to do that is with that balanced chemical equation, which we just looked at. I know for every one mole of nitrogen that's going to react, two moles of ammonia is going to be formed, again, from the balanced chemical equation. However, my known, I have 5.8 grams of nitrogen, not moles of nitrogen. So i got to be able to take those grams of nitrogen, change them into moles. So I need the molar mass of nitrogen. Since it's diatomic N2, the atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 times 2, 28 grams of nitrogen for every one mole of nitrogen. And the last thing I want to get out to grams of ammonia, and I only have a way to get to moles of ammonia, so i got to be able to take those moles of ammonia, which I can get to, and change them into grams of ammonia. So I need its molar mass also. And nitrogen has mass of 14, hydrogen mass of 1, there's 3 of them, so there's 17 grams of ammonia in every 1 mole of ammonia. So that's a difficult part of that problem, trying to analyze and figure out what information I need, get the little puzzle pieces I need to put together to put it 
all together to get my final solution. The rest is now just following along the units that I have to make them reduce out and get me closer to units that I want. So I'm going to take my given, put it over 1. That meant those grams of nitrogen, that's 5.8 grams of nitrogen over 1, my given quantity again over 1. But now I want to change those grams of nitrogen into moles of nitrogen because I really can't use grams of nitrogen when I'm trying to get to ammonia. So I need that conversion factor of my molar mass of nitrogen to my one mole of nitrogen to now get into moles of nitrogen. I need grams of nitrogen in the bottom so they reduce out. Now I have moles. And now I can get from my moles of nitrogen into moles of ammonia. I can relate those two different substances to each other now. But I need the mole ratio this time. And I can use it again in a way that will reduce out the moles of nitrogen that I have and get me to the moles of ammonia that I want. So I need the moles of nitrogen in the denominator this time. So now it reduces out once again. That leaves me with moles of ammonia. It still doesn't match my unknown quantity that I'm trying to get to. So I need to do one more conversion. I need to change those moles of ammonia into grams of ammonia. Again, now I'm going to use that molar mass, which I determined. And I need the one mole of ammonia on the bottom and the 17 grams of ammonia on top. Because again, moles divided by moles will reduce out. Leave me with grams of ammonia, which now is that unit I'm trying to find. So now I can just solve, take all the ones that are in the numerators, multiply them together, divide by the ones that are in the denominator, and I find that there are 7.04 grams of ammonia produced when 5.8 grams of nitrogen are reacted. It seems like an awful lot of little steps, but each step in itself isn't anything overly difficult, things that we've already kind of looked at already. But string them all together, and it does look like one big process. But keep them all together and kind of follow along where you started, where you're headed, where you're trying to get to, rather than solve each step along the way and break it up into a bunch of smaller problems. Just keep stringing your conversion factors together and follow the units along all the way up until the point where they match the units that you're trying to determine. And now we can use that same exact process for all the other ways in which we can relate different substances to different measurements. So if I have representative particles, I can use the representative particles of a given substance, change those into moles, then use that mole ratio to then get to representative particles of another substance. I can go again mass to mass as we saw there, or volume of a particular substance, change that into moles, then I can use those moles to relate to another substance, its moles, and then back out to volume. Or any other mix and match from one of the quantities on the left to one of the quantities on the right. So there's lots of different ways that you can relate one particular measurement of one substance to a different measurement of a different substance, but in every single possibility you need to go through moles and you got that mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So let's take a look at one of those different types of calculations where you take representative particles and try and get to volume of a different substance again through a balanced chemical equation. So in this particular reaction we have 7.5 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of zinc sulfide it's going to react and then we want to figure out how many liters of dihydrogen monosulfide would be produced when this reaction takes place. So here's that reaction is. We have zinc sulfide reacting with hydrochloric acid to make zinc chloride and dihydrogen monosulfide gas. And again, now we'll just list out known and unknown and kind of break it down step by step of how we can relate those substances to each other and then with the quantities we have, how to get there. So what do I know? What do I not know? Well, I know I have that 7.5 times 10 to the 23rd form units of zinc sulfide, and I know I'm trying to get to how many liters of dihydrogen monosulfide gas are going to be produced. The only way I can relate that zinc sulfide to the dihydrogen monosulfide, again, is through the mole ratio, through that balanced chemical equation. That one's pretty simple. One mole of zinc sulfide reacts, and one mole of dihydrogen monosulfide gas is being produced. However, I don't have moles of either substance. So let's look at our known first. We have formula units of zinc sulfide, not moles of zinc sulfide. So how can I get formula units of zinc sulfide into moles? Avogadro's number. I know that one mole of zinc sulfide is made up of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of zinc sulfide. And then lastly, I want to get out to liters of dihydrogen monosulfide gas, but I have moles of dihydrogen monosulfide gas. So how can I relate those two things? One mole of any gas is 22.4 liters at STP. And again, that's the difficult part of these type of problems, figuring out what information you need and how it all fits together. Obviously, as we just saw the last slide, we could figure if it's a gas in particular, we could find its molar mass, we could use Avogadro's number, and we could use that 22.4 liters for a mole. It's a matter of which one of those 
relationships do we need, it would be pertinent to this particular problem, rather than have to list out all that information and then try and pull out from each of those which one we want to use. So look at what the units are you have of your known, what the units you are trying to get to of your unknown, and then also that mole ratio, and then figure out which conversion factors will get you there. So from here on out, it's just a matter of taking the units that you have and can keep converting them to get closer and closer and closer until you match the units that you want. Get rid of units you don't want, get to units you do want. So we'll take our given, we'll put our given over 1. Take that 7.5 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of zinc sulfide over 1. And now I'm going to reduce out formula units of zinc sulfide. So I look up on my known, and I know that for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of zinc sulfide, there's one mole of zinc sulfide. I need the formula units of zinc sulfide in the denominator to make them reduce out. So I'm going to put the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Avogadro's number down in the denominator for every one mole of zinc sulfide up in the numerator. So those now reduce out, leaving me with moles of zinc sulfide. Moles of zinc sulfide don't match the units I'm trying to get to, don't even match the substance I'm trying to get to. So I need to now make another conversion. Well, how do I get rid of moles of zinc sulfide? I need them on the denominator of my next conversion factor. And I can look up in my knowns once again. And I know for every one mole of zinc sulfide that's reacting, one mole of dihydrogen monosulfide gas is being produced. So now moles of zinc sulfide reduce out. I am up to moles of dihydrogen monosulfide gas. Still doesn't match my unknown units, those liters that I want. So I got to make one more conversion to get to the end. And I know, again, up in my knowns, that every mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. So one mole of dihydrogen monosulfide gas is 22.4 liters of dihydrogen monosulfide gas. So moles of dihydrogen monosulfide gas reduce out. Leave me now with liters of dihydrogen monosulfide, which does now match my unknown units that I'm trying to solve for. So again, now it's just a matter of dividing by the denominators and multiplying the numerators and putting it all together to find 27.9 liters of dihydrogen monosulfide gas would be produced when 7.5 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of zinc sulfide react.